Hey friends, Susan Gregory here, and welcome to day seven of your journey in faith. I hope that you are growing in your faith as you take these studies day by day. And I hope you're not doing them any more than one day at a time. And let me tell you why. So we want to think of this, it's like a painting. And each one of these lessons is like a new coat of paint on the canvas of your heart. And we, like we're, we're looking to the Lord to teach us, to help us gain understanding. You know, Jesus, the word says in Hebrews 12, 2, that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. So just like a Finnish carpenter, he is the finisher. He's putting the, the finishing touches. So each one of these lessons is like a new layer of paint. Now, have, if you've painted something, and you're going to put on a second coat or a third coat, but you don't let the first coat dry, you know you can make a real mess. So the reason is that it hasn't set yet. And in the same way that we are putting on different layers, different coats of paint on your heart with these lessons, you want to make sure that this word, the things that you're learning are really getting deeply rooted in your heart. So when you just keep going lesson after lesson after lesson uh, in a you know short period of time, then those truths don't get really set in your heart. That, that coat of paint doesn't get dry, it doesn't get settled so that it's ready to accept the next coat. And so Please do these studies day by day and make sure that you also use the download lessons because those lessons have been designed so that when you hear the information, then you go to the lesson sheet and that's really where it works into your heart. When you have that quiet time, just you and the Lord, those questions, and there's only a few each day, but those questions, they ask you to think about things. And so it's like a confrontation. It's something that you get to wrestle with or get to really discover what is going on inside of you so you can grow. So let me start in prayer and then we'll get started in today's lesson. Father, we thank you for the wonderful work that you're doing in our hearts, that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the amazing blessing, the life that we can have in you as we learn more about you. We learn about your ways. So Father, we ask that you open our hearts, give us revelation today as we discover the things that you would have us learn so that we can walk more closely with you and represent you and be that light, that shining light of God's love to a world that so, so desperately needs to know the love of Christ. We praise you and thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So, as we recall, we, we are on that two roads. We're in that, there's that why in the road, and we can walk in the Spirit or we can walk in according to the world or according to the flesh. But look at what this scripture says. It really targets this. From 1 Corinthians 2.12, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So if you recall in yesterday's lesson, it was all about receiving these amazing blessings, all that Jesus gained for us on the cross when he was sacrificed. And that's what this is talking about. So we are gaining this spirit. We, the spirit of God comes into us and then it makes us alive. We are able to receive the revelations of the Lord because we, we have a new heart. We are a new creation. So what does that mean? It means that we want to abandon ourselves to the word of God. We're saying the word of God, it is true. Even the things that we may not yet understand about it because we are choosing to walk in the spirit. We are choosing to trust God. So the word says in John 12, 49, Jesus says, For I have not spoken on my own authority, 
But the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. So Jesus spoke the words of the Father. He said, I won't speak anything else, only the words of the Father. He was abandoned to the Father. He only did what the Father would have him do. We want to engage in that same type of behavior. Those those words that Jesus spoke, those words that were anointed because he only spoke the word of God are now our scriptures. That is what is in the scripture. That is what we can follow. The Holy Spirit has has given us those words. And so we too only want to speak and only want to believe what is in the word of God, just like Jesus. We want to take that word. We want to bring it into us. We want to make that, that word feel like we are attached to it and that it is like the lifeblood of our soul. We want to abandon ourselves to the word of God. So when we've got an issue that we need help on, where do we go? We go to the word of God. We don't go to the world for solutions. We go to the word of God. We find the scriptures that relate to that issue. If we've got a money issue, if we've got a health issue, if we've got an anxiety issue, whatever it is, we go to the word of God. And we find those scriptures that relate to that need. And then we say, okay, this is God's truth. This is the way the world looks at it. This is the way the enemy looks at it. This is the way my flesh may look at it. But this is the truth, whatever it is in the word of God. And then we take that word and we meditate on it. And we keep saying it to ourselves over and over again. And we keep, uh, we keep declaring, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. Because God is in me, because the spirit of God is inside of me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we just keep repeating it throughout the day in our quiet moments. When we first wake up in the morning and then when we first are going to sleep at night, when we're driving in our car, when we're walking down the hall, those, that's the way that the word gets deeply rooted in us. And we then abandon ourselves. Whatever the word says, we say, Father, your word is the last word in anything that I need. I go to your word. I believe your word. I trust your word. I believe that you will do what you say you will do. And I believe, Father, because I am your child, that you will give me everything I need. And I thank you, Father. I thank you that I already received the blessings that you have showered and poured over me, Father. And I praise you and thank you. And you, then you go to the word and you be, you're looking at what's already there in the word and you start meditating on it. You start thinking about it and you gain more understanding about it so that the word gets more deeply rooted in you. In the word, it says wisdom is the principal thing or the first thing. And that's because it's the wisdom of God. So it says wisdom is the principal thing. So get wisdom. But then it says, but in all you're getting, get understanding. Now, what that means is go to God, go to his wisdom and get that wisdom, but then gain understanding about it. Meditate on that word. Get that word deeply rooted in your heart. Because when we understand it, then we start believing it, and then we start acting on it, and then it becomes ours. So we are not easily moved. The enemy can try to push us aside and take us on a different route. We may even have some of our old fleshly thinking that's trying to to take us so that we don't put our trust in the word of God. But when we deeply understand the truth that is in his word, when we understand his wisdom, and we do that because we keep pouring that word over us. We keep eating and chewing on that bread, that bread of life that's in the word. We drink that living water of God's word. Then we gain understanding and then it gets deeply rooted and we cannot be moved. That's how it works. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Use the worksheet that I've prepared for you and think about the word 
and using the word and gaining understanding, meditating on that word to meet your needs. Speak the words of the Lord, the anointed words that are in the Bible, the words that Jesus spoke, the only words that he spoke were the word of God, and those are the same words that we want to speak. I hope this has been helpful to you. Again, this is Susan Gregory. Thanks for being here on your journey in faith. Bye for now.